Karen Jeffrey Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video we will discuss the different activities which we should perform while we are deploying our new system. Okay. So guys, when we build our system, we have built it, Madla, we designed it, we built it, we tested it and the last stage what we have to do is we need to deploy our new system right so that the system can be uh, delivered to the client and client can start using it okay basically what is deployment deployment is actually installing a new system on the client's location okay so while we are doing it there are some activities which we should perform okay so total there are three main activities so again depending upon author to author book to book writer to writer some can say three some can make it four some can make it two but there are three basic activities which are the part of deployment process okay the first activity is data conversion this set we will discuss these activities in detail one by one but let me list it up data conversion then second activity is user training and then the comes the main activity we call it as system deployment okay so guys these are the main activities which are part of your deployment process now we will discuss these activities in detail one by one. So guys coming to the first activity that is data conversion. Okay, now all of you know there is some old system and we all are aware for a system to run it always needs some data. So the old system is running on some data. Okay, so which it is processing and which it is converting to information and giving it to the users right or to the top management. Okay, so old system is running on some data and we are aware that new system will also run on some data. But the problem is the data which is which old system is using should be in a format so that it can be used by the new system, right? So this activity is called as a data converge, conversion. So basically what is data conversion? Con converting the old data so that it can be used by the new system now if the older system is not a computer computer based system for example still the old system is a system which is still using paper files okay so then all the data is stored in a paper file so all the data must be converted into a digital data so means what we have to do is we need all the paper records and we need to enter all those paper records to the computer right to the new database so that the system can run on the old and the new data okay so that activity is called as a data conversion and if already the old system is using some computerized system okay then that makes our job little easier because then we need, do not need to enter the huge volume of data but still we need to convert it to the new system for example in the old system if you are storing your data in excel form or in the excel sheets or in the spreadsheets right and in the new system we are using a modern rdbms right so then all those spreadsheets must be converted into oracle table or any of the rdbms tables right so all these activities of converting the old data into the new data right comes in the first stage because guys data conversion is very important why because if no data the system will not work okay so system needs data to work so to make it work we must convert the old data to the new data so that it can be used by the new system which we are going to deploy so this activity is called as the data conversion so after data conversion the next activity which comes is called as user training okay now you know the system will be used by some set of users right so how they will use it they can only use it if they are properly trained to use the system right now in this stage before we deploy the system 
ओके और वाई वी आर डिप्लॉइंग अ सिस्टम वी मस्ट ट्रेन अवर यूजर्स राइट सो दैट दे कैन इफेक्टिवली यूज द न्यू सिस्टम सो गाइज वट विल हैपन इफ वी डू नॉट ट्रेन द यूजर्स टू यूज द न्यू सिस्टम सपोज यू इंस्टॉल द न्यू सिस्टम एंड यूजर डज नॉट नो हाउ टू यूज इट देन वट विल बी द इफेक्ट ऑफ इट यूजर विल नॉट यूज इट right user will be confused he will keep on complaining this new system is not good it is not good enough isn't it which can lead to your system failure so very important the users must be trained to use the new system now how do we train the user okay so we train the users you know all any new product which we buy it always comes with the instruction manual so all the instructions are written in form of a book a in a booklet and the users and we the consumers we can read the instruction and we can use the system why they provide us with the instruction manual so that the user knows how to use the new system so in the user training the first thing which comes is the instruction manuals is it it we need to provide the instruction manuals to the users right so that users can read them and you he can know how to do it other than giving the instruction manual okay other than providing them with the instruction manual we may need to do on site training for the user so where our experts go and they give the demos and they tell the user actually how to practically use the system we also call it as on site training or demos okay so guys why it is important it is important so that our system does not fail in user acceptance testing right so we need to train him we need to provide him the manual we need to go and give him the demos we need to tell him we need to clear his doubts okay so that our user is satisfied with the new system he if he is confused he will never be satisfied okay if he is properly trained to handle the new system then definitely he'll be satisfied with the system which is a plus point for us so all these activities writing the user manuals providing them with the help going and deploy training the users right or giving them demos okay all these things they come in something called as user training okay and one thing more i would like to tell you here is in user training sometimes the system the people who have made the system they find it little challenging when the user is not computer literate okay if the user is already using computer it makes our job easy but in case the user is not computer literate he doesn't know how to use a computer so that can extend this phase okay where we need to train the user from the scratch okay that is one of the challenge of the user training so now we will proceed to the last and the final step two so guys the last stage which comes is called as deployment now what is deployment deployment is actually when we install the system so that the client can start using it now guys deployments can also be of different types so in deployment we have three types of deployment first deployment is called as direct deployment what is a direct deployment in direct deployment what what happens we have a old system for example we have a old system i will write it old and one fine day we bring a new system and that's it okay so in one shot we move from the old system to new system right so this thing is called as direct deployment It means today you are going you using the old system and after tomorrow you will be using the new system direct deployment okay it has its own benefits the main benefit in this is the cost of deploying the system is very low why it is low because we run only one system at a time first we were running the old system now we are running the new system but the problem with this approach is when you move directly from the new old system to the new system the user may not feel comfortable with it initially isn't it because user is trained for using a old system and the change from the old to new is not smooth it is a abrupt change 
सो द यूजर मे फेस सम प्रॉब्लम ओके और यूजर मे रिपोर्ट सम कंप्लेन्ट टू यू राइट सो दिस इज लो कॉस्ट बट इट हैव अ लिटल हायर रिस्क राइट फॉर विद द यूजर सेटिस्फेक्शन ओके बट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज डायरेक्ट डिप्लॉयमेंट so after direct deployment we have second approach we call it as parallel deployment parallel deployment now what happens in parallel deployment so we discussed the direct deployment where suddenly we move from the old system to new system but in parallel deployment what happens we have a old system right and with the old system we also start the new system now at this point if you see the users are using both the systems they are using the old system and concurrently they are also using the new system so what is the advantage of it advantage of this approach is the transition from old system to new system is smooth user is using the old one and he is trying to use the new one so with the time when he gets comfortable with the new system he discards the old and we go to the new system so this is called as parallel deployment now the advantage of it this is the risk is low user will get adapted to the new system but the disadvantage of this approach is it is a high cost approach why it is high cost because we are running two systems at the same time so the cost on running two systems parallelly is higher as compared to running one single system but but this has a lower risk and we call it as parallel deployment then guys comes third deployment then comes third so i will not delete this we call it as phased we call it as phased deployment so what is phased deployment they say we install the new system in phases we build the new system in phases and we replace the install the new system in phases for example here we have a old system a here we have a old system a then what we will do with a we will make a new system a right so they both will run in parallel then after some time a will re new system a will replace the old system okay and at the same time we have old system b right so the, the system is divided into two components one component is a another component is b so what will happen so we will replace we will run old a old b and new a for the same time okay so then what will happen smoothly we will move from old a to new a the new a and old b will run together okay then after some time we will have new b we will have new b so then what will happen new a old b and new b will run to gather for some time and eventually what will happen we will move to new a and new b and old a and old b will be replaced so we call it as phased deployment so what we is phased we do not deploy the full system in one go rather we replace the old components in different phases phase old a matlab smoothly we replaced old a with new a so the new a and old b run for some time then with the time new a old b and new b run for some time then ultimately in the end we have only new a and new b running so we call it as phased deployment okay so guys i hope this makes it clear to you what are the activities which come in system deployment so guys again if you like our channel please subscribe to my channel and if you have any feedback please leave it in the comment section and all of you Thanks for watching.